this is self-indulgent time. <laughs> Don't do these much. Uh, but yeah, so last week I was at Intel Vision. Uh, Intel invited me to head out there and be a main stage speaker. Uh, on the Business Insights stage, I was launching the Mobile HX Mobile Workstation platform. It's the new range of processors that are going to be in the 12th generation mobile workstations this year, the Precision ZZ books and stuff. Uh, that was in Texas. So I was doing a main stage presentation to show off how good they are. Uh, I didn't really make a song. I didn't make any song and dance of it at all. Actually, I never mentioned it once in the lead up to it because, I don't know, just didn't really want to, didn't really want to. But um, now that it's done, I didn't, I didn't do any sort of, you know, vlogging whilst I was there. I didn't take much video whilst I was there. It was, I was so hyper-focused on getting the demo right because it was so out of my comfort zone that, that it was all about that. But now that it's done, I don't know. I just want to brain dump what it was like and just, I don't know, just, hey, if you want to watch it, links in the description for the presentation. And yeah, if you have watched it, I don't know, I just, I just want to just talk about it for a bit because, I don't know, you might have some questions and why, why did you do that? Why, why did you, what, what, what's that about? That sort of stuff uh, and just waffle a bit. Uh, that's all this, just a recap on the week because it's been, it's been a week. My channel's been quiet over the last couple of months because my entire life, not joking, has been hyper-focused. Nothing else, ca not, basically nothing else mattered apart from getting ready for that presentation. It was my first on-stage presentation in 10 years. Uh, using software anyway, using a you know, software demonstration. And it was, originally it was going to be in front of potentially uh, over a thousand people. I think it was around 500 plus in the room, maybe. Uh, and millions watching online. Uh, and my last one was 10 years ago. So it was, you know, thrown into the fire. Fish out of water as well is another expression because the audience weren't Autodesk. I've presented at Autodesk University a few times over the last couple of years, but not hands-on product presentations, just more speaking PowerPoint sort of thing. Um, and to an Autodesk audience, this wasn't. This was business leaders, IT managers from the medical profession, from finance, with the tech press there, media, that sort of stuff in the audience who mostly didn't know what Autodesk was. And here's me giving a presentation using Inventor, using Recap, using VRED. So to try and make that relatable in some sort of way and interesting, there was a, there was a lot to sort of cram in and to prepare for. So yeah, Intel Vision, it's, it used to be called IDF, I think, the Intel Developer Forum. It's kind of like Autodesk University in that it's got, you know, keynote presentations, uh, this was sort of, it wasn't a keynote as such, but it's one of them. It was a main stage presentation called Business Insights uh, alongside. So I was on stage alongside Chris Walker, who's the vice president and general manager of Intel's entire mobile platform business unit. Uh, Jennifer Tallarico, Stephanie, Hal like Stephanie Halford, who's the vice president for vPro. Uh, and we all got on so well. Like it was just, they were just so chill and down to earth. Uh, I got to meet so many cool people, just got on with them all really well and got an insight into so many things. So many questions answered as well as to like, I wonder how this works. I wonder what you guys think about this. And it'll go, nothing's gonna go any further, but it was just fascinating. It was really fascinating uh, to see how much they cared as well. But yeah, anyway, v Vision was in Texas and Dallas, Grapevine, at, um, at a Marriott. Absolutely insane venue. It was smaller scale than the Vegas Autodesk University events, but that's because it's their first sort of in-person event after the COOF. I think they've been burned a couple of times with events being cancelled. So I think it's just sort of a, just warming the engines up sort of, of an event. But um, overall, it went pretty well. Uh, well, I, just, just speaking about mine anyway, I, can't, I, don't know, I, I don't have a clue what else happened at Vision. Uh, I just... For the first four days that I was there, I landed Friday, presentation was Tuesday, didn't leave the hotel once, just hardcore prep rehearsals um, and just making sure that everything's going to go fine. So if you've watched my presentation, uh, you might have questions, I, I don't know, but um, the, the people in the audience didn't really care what I was actually showing. It, it didn't matter. So as much as there was a narrative to what I was showing, you can pick holes in it. Like, why would you do that? What, well, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, it, it, it honestly didn't matter. My main challenge was time. It was 
fitting what I needed to show into a time, like a really tight time frame. And the time frame just got smaller and smaller. Actually, it was originally quite small. It was four minutes. And then I jumped on a call with Chris. He was like, ah, you've got as much time as you want. So I was like, Re oh, right. Okay, then. Right. Well, so then I, I expanded the demo. But then when we got to vision, it was like, yeah, we, we, we don't have that much time. Actually, you we've got a strict 45 minute window. We need to get people out the door. So you're going to have to. I was like, oh, my God. So I had to cut it back. But um, so the, the whole point, anyway, was just to show off how good mobile HX is. And it. There was no, no tomfoolery. It is absolutely awesome. Like hands down, it is incredible. So the, the presentation was, I'm opening up a six and a half thousand part assembly. That is genuinely a production data set that I've taken from my old company that I was actually the CAD manager for when that was designed and built. Uh, I'm bringing that into Inventor. I'm dropping it onto a truck, then bringing a point cloud scan in. And I've got a constraint create created so the truck can sort of slide backwards and forwards along the bridge. Uh, that was just not possible. A few years ago, even on desktop, on desktops, we wouldn't have been able to do that. So that was impressive in itself. And then the narrative was, we're going to do some transport checks, right? It's got to go over to the client. It's got to go into some bridges. So I'm going to import a point cloud to make sure it can fit under the bridge. Um, and of course, there's that you you wouldn't just do that, right? But time, the people in the audience didn't care, and I needed to do something that puts the cause at a hundred percent. There's not many things that do that, right? So th this was just one of the things. The point cloud that I imported was intentionally small. It was 1.2 gigabytes. Uh, that's small for point cloud, but it had to be because it had to import on the efficiency cores in a reasonable amount of time whilst I'm talking. So I can then flick away from it, let it run the efficiency cores, do something else in Inventor, show the audience that Inventor's uninterrupted, and then jump back to recap and show that now it's finished. If the point cloud was any bigger, it would just, it would, the demo would have never finished because it would still be important, the point cloud. So it was intentionally small. It had to be half a bridge and then I had to weave a narrative around, well, why have I only got half a bridge? Oh, because the team got out in side bad weather, called them short. They only scanned half the bridge. Now we have to, you know. So it was, it was all about just making the best of what I had, I was able to do in the time that I had. And then the bit at the end, again, if you've watched the presentation, there's a bit at the end where I've got a, a CPU render running in the background. That was, I added that in two days before the actual presentation. I think it was the Sunday, I think I decided to add that in. And I did that because most of my demos that I've ever done, like historically, 10 years ago plus, there's always been sort of a big sort of finale, right? Then it's, I hate boring present like boring presentations where you just, you're sitting through and it's just like, blah, 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 finish. If it's boring, at least at the end, give someone something to remember at the end, right? Some big sort of finale, some big bang at the end, right? So I thought, well, if the audience don't understand what I'm talking about, if they don't get, everyone knows what a render is. Everyone knows that rendering is hard on the system. So at the very end, I decided, right, I'm going to start a CPU render and I'm going to have that running throughout the entire demonstration. And that legitimately was impressive. Like when I tried that during my just preparations on the, the weekend before, I was actually impressed that that worked. So on the efficiency cores, eight of them on the 12900HX, there was a high production quality VRED CPU ray trace at production quality running on the efficiency cores, maxing out the viewport. Well, this, is, well, this wasn't no 360p render. This was maxing out the viewport, probably 1080 and then that was running in the background and I was importing a point cloud at the same time on the efficiency course. And I had Inventor in the foreground running a six and a half thousand part assembly and running simulate, I mean, there's a small part simulation, but you know, it doesn't matter. But it just wasn't, in, just running the simulation on previous gens, having that running at all on the laptop would have just, I wouldn't have been able to do the demo. So that was genuinely impressive. So um, yeah. It was it was a challenge to bring it all down and do it within the time frame, you know, doing transport checks and why why would you do why why would you do the render with someone else would yeah I I know I know it, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it, it it was just what can I do to show off the the power and the performance uh, and fit it into the time that I had and it, it seemed to go down well there was a couple of hiccups the biggest hiccup um, was I made the, the the cardinal sin for demos I should have known better. You never, ever change anything. Once you've prepped and you're happy with something, never change anything, never do anything different. So before the demo started, 
when uh, the audience were in the room, uh, I ran on stage before the, the actual camera started rolling and I started the background CPU render. It had to be started before everyone else started. So when I went on stage, the render was already running. I checked it about a dozen times. When I was behind the curtain ready to be called, I was like, did I start though? Doubt started creeping. I've checked it a dozen times, but did you start it though? But did you though? Because you've checked it a lot of times in rehearsals, you can remember checking it, but that remembrance, was that a rehearsal remembrance? Or did you really check it? I'm like, oh, stop it, stop it. So the, the prospect of getting to that point of the demo and not seeing the render actually rendering was overwhelming. So I just thought, I'll speak to one of the demo guys. Uh, the demo team, absolutely incredible. Utterly incredible. They were like, ah, it's fine. It's, it's fine. We'll just use the KVM. We'll just connect to the laptop. I'll switch. I'll just alt have the application check that is rendered on. It's on. You're fine. I was like, right. Okay. Should never have done that because what it did is it knocked off the mouse driver temporarily. So because the KVM was controlling the mouse and keyboard. So when I got on stage, this was not, this wasn't tested. Hadn't planned this, never done this before during rehearsals. Got on the laptop, put my hands on the mouse. The mouse cursor wouldn't move. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. So I start, my mouth was still saying the words that I should be saying. My brain was thinking, just, just, just fucking start. Just fucking keep, just fucking work, fucking work. And um, it eventually, after two or three seconds, it started moving, but my hand was starting to shake. I was thinking, do not do this to me. So that was a shaky, nervy start. It kind of threw me for about a minute, maybe 30 seconds or something, but um, got past that. Uh, and then once I got on the floor, I was fine. But um, yeah, there was, I don't know, all, all through the demo, I was just sort of conscious about time. That was that was the biggest challenge. Just, am I, am I going too fast? I'm saying things that I know I should have cut out, but I'm saying it anyway. Just carry on, Neil, just keep on going. They're not going to stop you. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, overall, I was really happy with how the demo went. Um, and Intel were as well. Uh, they were just amazing. Like they had... You know, they had no intentions at all of sort of dictating the narrative, you know, say this, say that, don't say this, don't say that. Um, uh, oh, yeah, the other one was at the end where we got to the scores. <laughs> and because we would we had the Infomark scores sort of ready to, to show on the screen behind me. So, the, I mean, mobile checks absolutely demolished the leaderboard. It was sort of coming in neck and neck roughly with the stock uh, 12900K. But... The numbers were big. It was like 66, 984 versus the AMD's highest desktop. It was 59. So I couldn't remember the numbers. I had so much to remember. I, I didn't want to remember the numbers. They were just going to put them on the screens in front of me. So I was saying to the production staff, just make sure the only thing I haven't memorized are the unmarked scores. Just make sure they're on the screen. And then I check with them. If, so Chris had the clicker. He was clicking the screens forward. And um, I was like, just make sure Chris remembers to put the scores on the screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, if he doesn't, is someone else got a clicker? Will they be able to move it forward? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got it behind, they've got it back screen. So yeah, when we got that bit, I was just padding time. I was like, yeah, in see, Neil, you're, you're, you're well known for Invermark. You know, the I was I was supposed to just go straight into the scores, but they weren't on the screen. So I was like, oh my God, he's forgot, hasn't he? Sick. So I just, then that's, that's why I ended up going, yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah, and my, yeah, benchmark test, got drawn test, model test, yeah, render test, I was looking at the screen, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's not it's not synthetic. No, no, real world test, blah, 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 blah. And I was thinking, why is the, why are the scores not on the screen yet? As so I was filling time, filling time. And then in the end, I was just like, I need the scores on the screen. <laughs> he was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so I, I think, it, I think it, it came across quite sincere. But um, yeah, it, it was his. It was Chris's job to to move the the screen forward so I could see the scores because I just hadn't memorized them. The, the numbers were way too big. Uh, they were probably behind me, but I, just the prep was they were going to be straight ahead. But other than that, yeah, it was it, it went it went really well, and uh, I'm really pleased with overall how everything had gone. Uh, after Tuesday, I absolutely crashed. I wish I'd gone out and saw more of Texas. I said when I landed, I'm going to be sorely disappointed if I leave Texas and I don't see someone rustling cattle, cowboy boots with the spurs and, I don't know, something from a Tarantino film. That's that's what I wanted to see. Didn't get to see any of that, but that's... 
it's a big place. <laughs> it's a big place. But um, I don't know. There'll be, there'll be other times. There'll be other times. But yeah, that was that was Intel Vision. It was an experience, and really hope I get to do it again on future launches because. Just working with those guys, they were incredible to work with. And I feel like I'm kind of back into it now to a certain extent. It, that was me getting sort of the engines fired back up for, for live presentations. And just that it was a huge learning curve to see the production, what goes into it and just going through the motions, right? What do you, what do you want? What do you expect? What, what's the expectations here? Like, I know what I want to do, but what are you expecting me to do? Just so just once we got sort of through all that, and then I saw the end result. Like next time, it'll be like, know what you want. Let's just do this presentation. Any bother? But um, yeah. So presentation, if you want to watch it, is linked down below. Uh, the mobile HX workstations, they'll be coming out probably over the next month or so. Uh, the the specs and stuff are out, but you know it'll, it'll take a month or so for the actual workstations to sort of hit the market. But there's no more mobile Xeon, so mobile Xeon is dead. Xeon itself, the actual server Xeon and desktop Xeons will still exist, but it's not going to be in mobile anymore. So I've got right here, underneath me, uh, the, seven, the Dell Precision 7760. That's got the Xeon 11955M in it. No more Xeon 11955M. It'll be Core i9-12950HX. It's probably the one you'll find in any mobile workstations. Uh, the ones with 50, so the i9-12950 is the one that's V Pro enabled. That's probably the one that you'll find in most mobile workstations. And I think it's the 12850. And then I think the i5 as well. It might be 127. I don't know, it's not. Uh, but the i5 one's got V Pro enabled as well, as well as ECC support. So um yeah. But yeah, what a what a platform. What what a what a group as well. Just really impressed with the whole outfit. You know, you, you do see them from a distance, you, you're only exposed to a certain perception. Of um of a company of a of a commodity, but having spoke to them and you know I had drinks with Stephanie Halford, the VP for VPro for a couple hours and had nachos and met a lot of her team, and just just seeing them speaking to them, they're just so chill. It was it was awesome, absolutely amazing. Uh, but yeah, that was Intel Vision in Texas, and all done and dusted kind of glad it's done now i can focus on some other stuff and move past it and crack on with uh, some other things but thanks for watching that was uh, 17 minutes of me just i don't know i don't know what i'm just doing. anyway right thanks again thanks again to intel for for the invite out to texas and for having me on stage thanks to all the support staff all the demo team all the camera guys the production team chris on stage all the other vps who were amazing and just welcoming when we were all backstage and just having a crack on Brilliant. Thanks again. And I don't know, maybe we'll see. I'll see you at AU at some point soon at Autodesk University, if not at a future Intel event. Uh, I might make it more well known in the future. Yeah, this one was just more focusing on the demo than, than anything else. I didn't want to put too much pressure on myself. But anyway, there you go. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Doodles.